Let's see if we can get an idea of what's going on inside President Putin's uh, head. Uh, Mikhail uh, Kazyanov uh, was uh, Prime Minister of Russia from 2000 to 2004 during President Putin's first administration. Uh, he's now with the opposition uh, People's Freedom Party in Russia. Uh, welcome to DW, sir. Uh, you know the president well. What do you think the purpose of this invasion is? Thank you for having me in the program. Uh, I think this uh, is completely different Putin. Uh, in fact, before Monday, I believed and I thought that uh, Mr. Putin was bluffing, bluffing, trying to get concessions from the West on just those, uh, I would say, imagined security threats, etc. For a few months, uh, those negotiations, and he um, wanted to have pictures just shaking hand of uh, uh, President Biden and other um, European leaders. Uh, and uh, on Monday, when I watched TV and uh, Mr. Putin's speech on the uh, meeting of um, the Security Council, and later his strange lecture with the full contradictions and uh, imagined history uh, stories, I understood that something wrong with the, uh, I think just Mr. Putin uh, is uh, out of a normal mind. And in fact, what is happening today, it's, it's absolutely disaster. It's disaster that is, um, uh, uh, I would say, uh, violation of international law. Just no one could expect such a violation, no, such a disaster. Right. The fear before this happened was that if it happened, Mr. Putin would not stop at uh, Donetsk and Luhansk and would go for the whole uh, of the country. Now the fear must be that perhaps he won't even stop at Ukraine. Uh, right now, you're correct. Uh, it's an absolutely unpredictable situation. Nobody can predict what P Mr. Putin thinks right now and what his ambition uh, is at the moment. In fact, uh, you know, just there is uh, there is uh, such kind of um, that, um, explanation that um, uh, he wants to restore so-called uh, Nova Russia, which is um, uh, Mala Russia, Mala Russia, which uh, was li uh, li light in, in a, a couple of centuries ago from Donbas to Odessa, uh, so that uh, and Ukraine has no access to, Black, to the Black Sea. That is, maybe this is the idea at the moment that we see in Kherson, which is uh, uh, another part, uh, thousand part of uh, of Ukraine. Uh, Russian tanks are there, and people are already complaining that they didn't expect just that so quickly those tanks would appear. It means Mr. Putin going further on to Odessa and, and Transnistria. There's very dangerous development taking place right now. With our 2020 hindsight, what do you think? Could this have been prevented if uh, the West, the EU, the NATO, the US had taken tougher action uh, previously? Uh, uh, previously, uh, uh, I, I, don't, I don't think that would prevent because uh, Mr. Putin just uh, explained that they're prepared. In fact, you can uh, imagine that uh, Mr. Putin and his inner circle, they are prepared to, to live in isolation. Uh, they, they all came from the Soviet Union, as, as many of us, and they were in KGB. And KGB was an elite organization, and they lived in very well conditions. And right now, they believe they will survive uh, the same way. They don't care about Russian people and, and, uh, and uh, just the whole situation in Russia. They're thinking about themselves. They're prepared for isolation. But I don't think they realized how difficult it will be if those harsh sanctions, which were explained previously by uh, American and European leaders, would be exposed. That will be disaster for economy. And if foreign exchange inflow would stop coming into Russia, it means just dramatic devaluation of ruble. It means absolutely uh, growing poverty every day. It means growing ne negative attitude to Mr. Putin within a short period of time. All right. Well, uh, let's pick up that point. Then let's hear uh, from the uh, president of the European Commission, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, talking about sanctions. Let me be very clear. It is President Putin who will have to explain this to his citizens. I know that the Russian people do not want this war. The European Union and NATO have worked in close complementarity and this crisis will bring us even closer together. It is our shared duty to stand up to the gravest act of aggression on European soil since decades. 
Mikhail Kasyanov, uh, you and uh, Sir von der Leyen uh, both made the, the, the same point that this will lead to unrest amongst the Russian people. But we have a Russian president who has been in power long enough that he knows which levers to pull and he can keep his people uh, down. So this isolation that you, you talk about, that you think that you say that will not bother him but will bother the Russian people, will, will he be bothered by their response? people would understand that they already have nothing to lose. Uh, ordinary people, which is more than 50% of population, uh, which live in uh, very poor conditions, uh, and uh, you know just the poverty is 20 million people, just uh, people who live under the, the level, uh, appropriate level of, of living. And that these people would start would start uh, understanding, that uh, would start to understand what's going on, why just Russia is such a rich country and having such a, a big problems and they cannot they cannot survive middle class and the big cities already started to to, to protest and some people already put in arrest were arrested and put in put in, in jail just during the day that we already see reports from moscow and st petersburg and uh, for example and i think that that will be growing growing unrest of people not immediately but uh, during a short period of time with absolutely mature mature a clear vision who is responsible who for for, for all those problems who is guilty where the source of all danger for Russian people is. I think they will clearly would understand. And with our help of my uh, party, People's Freedom Party, although we are under pressure right now and we uh, cease to exist this year because just uh, government already just announced that we should clo be closed very soon because we are in cooperation with so-called undesirable organization abroad. It means um, our uh, parties um, uh, in the European Union, just with whom we cooperate uh, very closely, because we have um, common values, and uh, we will will be close very soon. We already made those statements, of course, this right. morning and uh, yesterday, and and we uh, realized just how difficult for people will be to accept what is going on, and how difficult will be to overcome when the sanctions will be exposed. But so just let, 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 okay, no, we, we've got that. Let, let me just bust process. in there and just just talk about this this process because this looks like it's going to be a very long, drawn-out process. You have the invasion, which has now started. You have international leaders talking about sanctions. They have then to agree them, and the EU is, is not quick to do that, for, uh, as an example. They have to agree them, they have to implement them, then they have to bite, during which time uh, Russia becomes more and more embedded in whichever bits of Ukraine or indeed the whole country it has taken. So we are talking about months in this process before we see sanctions actually working, aren't we? Uh, it's not a question for me, I think, just because it's, uh, um, European leaders should decide just how, how, how fast and how harsh, how, how strong those sanctions um, should be, what, what other response is, because there is no any instrument in their hands. But in fact, if, if I can say, I can tell you that if the sanctions will touch oil and gas sector, that will be immediate effect within a couple of months. Because just um, uh, you know, just the, the uh, for, for, for foreign exchange will not come to, to Russia, and that means there will be a huge pressure to ruble. It means just devaluation of uh, national currency. It means just no access for international uh, foreign markets. It, it, it means just Russian banking system cannot cannot finance anything. It means printing money. It means hyperinflation. It means disaster and, and uh, unrest on the streets. So that's a response to Russia. What about a response for Ukraine? Is there anything more that the West could be doing uh, for Ukraine? Uh, I think the rest should reconsider all what's going, was going on and is going, going uh, around Ukraine since 2014. And uh, the, uh, the, the West should uh, recall that there is so-called Budapest Memorandum, where uh, United States and uh, Great Britain promised to Ukraine to protect and to respect inter uh, territorial integrity and sovereignty of the country. Uh, a part of those economic sanctions, I think just there is a global security threat. 
and uh, I'd say I think just violation of international law, violation of all those agreements in in, in Budapest Memorandum, in particular, it's a serious issue. I think uh, Ukrainian government already called members of Budapest Memorandum to 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 set up a special discussion and and, and think about this, how to tackle this threat which appeared just yesterday. Understood. Thank you. And very clear, sir. Thank you for joining us, former uh, Prime Minister of Russia, Mikhail Kasyanov. Thank you. Well, Vladimir Putin announced this invasion as uh, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres was speaking at an emergency session of the UN Security Council and urging the Russian president to give peace a chance. Mr Putin's televised late-night address came shortly after self-proclaimed separatist leaders in eastern Ukraine asked him for military support. This attack is the culmination of a series of escalations that began on Monday when President Putin recognised the independence of two regions in eastern Ukraine, including territory controlled by Kyiv.